in the previous lecture we discussed metallic bonds and the free electron theory of metals. So basically that theory describes that electrons within any given metal solid or the outer electrons of the atoms are able to move freely about that entire solid. And that's because the nuclei of our individual metal atoms hold our outer electrons by very weak electric forces and that means the electrons are allowed to move or roam freely about the entire solid metal. Now even though electrons are allowed to stay within our entire solid metal and are allowed to move freely, they cannot actually escape the surface of the metal or there is a very low probability that the electron will gain enough energy to escape into the surrounding atmosphere. Now in a way we can think of the electrons as being trapped inside that metal solid. Now since electrons are trapped within the metal we can imagine that the metal actually acts as if it was a potential well, a finite potential well also known as a rigid box. That is, the electrons have an electric potential energy of zero when they're inside that well, when they're inside that metal, and that means they can move about freely, but the electric potential energy jumps to a very high value when those electrons get to the edge of that metal, when they reach the surface of that metal. And because the electrons don't have enough energy to act actually overcome that high potential barrier, that means those electrons will stay within that metal. Now of course, quantum tunneling can take place and those electrons can actually escape into the atmosphere, but the probability of that taking place is very, very small. Now recall in our discussion on rigid boxes and infinite potential wells, we said that a particles such as an electron trapped inside a potential well has quantized amounts of energy that is given by this equation and we see that the energy depends on the principal quantum number n. So this equation gives us the quantized amount of energy that our electron has when it's given by some quantity of principal quantum numbers. So E and the energy is equal to n squared multiplied by h squared Planck's constant squared divided by 8 multiplied by m the mass of the electron multiplied by L squared the width of that rigid box, the width of our metal that we're considering. Now, similarly, electrons trapped inside our metal solids have quantized energy states. But the question is, how many quantized energy states do actually exist? Well, to answer this question, let's recall the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, by the Pauli exclusion principle, all electrons must be given by a certain unique set of four quantum numbers and only two electrons can be found in any given electron density in any given electron orbital. And since we have a very large number of electrons within our uh, total metal, that means we must have a very high number of quantum states. And in just a moment, when we look at the following example, we'll see that this is is actually true. Now, in order to describe all the different possibilities that our electron can actually have, all the different quantum states that the electron can take inside our solid metal, we define a mathematical function known as the density of states that is given by the following equation. So this is the mathematical function known as the density of states that gives us the 
distribution or the density of all the possible quantum states per unit volume per unit energy that the electrons inside our solid metal can actually take. So basically in this equation our m is the mass of the electron, the e is the energy of that electron, h is Planck's constant and pi is also a constant. So if we wanted to we can plot this on the xy axis where the y axis is our density of states and our e is the energy and we get the following curve. So basically this equation, this function is a very useful function. So we can integrate this function between any two energy values to actually calculate the number of quantum states per unit volume that can exist between those energy states. And if we calculate this value and multiply it by the volume, well that will give us the possible number of quantum states that the electron can actually take. So, for example, if E1 is equal to this value and E2 is equal to this value, we can basically integrate this and this entire region will basically give us the number of quantum states per unit volume. And if we multiply that, if we know the volume of our metal solid and multiply it by that, we get the different quantity of possible quantum states. So let's quickly look at the following example in which we're going to use this equation, this function, to approximate the number of quantum states. So, approximate the number of energy quantum states using the density of states function for electrons with energies between 5 electron volts and 6 electron volts in a solid metal that has a volume of 1.2 centimeters cubed. So basically, we want to use the density of states. Now, by this definition, we see that the density of states given by rho, which depends on E, is defined as the number of possible quantum states per unit volume, per unit energy. So that means if we take this function rho of E, which is given by this quantity, this equation, and we multiply it by the change in energy and by the volume of our entire metal solid, that will give us approximately what the number of our possible quantum states is. Now, our change in energy for this particular case is simply 6 electron volts minus 5 electron volts, which is equal to 1 electron volt. And that is equal to 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules of energy. Now, if we want to use this volume, we must first convert this into meters. So we basically multiply it by 10 to negative 6, and our centimeters cancel, and we're left with meters meters. So basically, let's actually rewrite this equation. So let's plug in this entire equation into rho of E. And let's actually plug in our known values. Now in this particular case, our energy, because we're approximating, we're going to take the average of the two values. So we're going to use 6 plus 5 divided by 2, and that gives us about 5.5 electron volts. So to convert to our joules, we take 5.5 and simply multiply by 8.8 .8 times 10 to negative or 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules and we get at 8.8 .8 times 10 to negative 19 joules. So we take this energy, we take the square root, we multiply it by 8, multiply it by the square root of 2, multiplied by pi, and then we multiply it by the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kilograms, and we take the square root and we raise the power of 3. And then we divide that by Planck's constant, raise the power of 3. And then we take that, multiply it by the volume given in meters, cubed and multiplied by the energy change given in joules and we get that the possible or the approximate possible quantum state is given by this value. So 
about 1.91 times 10 to the 22 possible quantum states that the electron inside the entire solid metal given by this relatively small volume. So that means there is a really big number of possible quantum states that the electron can actually have.